Well, it's an autobiography memoir c combined with a history of American education reform over the last 50 years and um, indeed intersecting the um, autobiographical side of it with the uh, historical side of it was the challenge in writing the book. Um, I just finally felt like uh, it was time to tell sort of how things had come to be the way they are and that it would be a lot more interesting if I intertwined that with uh, how I came to be the way I am. And uh, so the intersection of the personal story and the history uh, is the uh, theme of the book along with a lot of uh, very personal stuff like my own kids' education and uh, topics like that. About 1967, when I um, went enrolled in a doctoral program at the Harvard Ed School that was actually a policy program. That was pretty much the year after I tried full-time high school teaching and decided that uh, uh, my perch in this field was not going to be retail. Uh, it was going to be wholesale, and uh, that meant uh, trying to alter the system rather than try to be a, uh, a cog in it. And uh, that was as a graduate student aged about 24. Well, the dominant figure in, in my uh, graduate education and then in about the first 15 years of my life in three different jobs was Pat Moynihan, the late uh, Senator Daniel Patrick Moynihan who was newly arrived at Harvard as a professor of education and urban affairs at the very same year I was looking for a doctoral advisor and he didn't have any doctoral students and I had met him before I had met him when he came and guest lectured in undergraduate courses and when I went to visit him once in Washington when he was working on the war on poverty but um, basically uh, he I persuaded him to be my doctoral advisor and then uh, a uh, year or two, two years later, uh, Nixon asked him to go to work at the White House as the uh, urban affairs guy. Uh, keep in mind, this is 1968, 69. The cities are ablaze. Um, the uh, RFK and Martin Luther King assassinations had just happened. Looked like the country was going to hell in a handbasket. And um, uh, Nixon, who didn't really like Harvard professors, hired both Henry Kissinger and Pat Moynihan uh, to come from Harvard to sit in the West Wing of the White House and um, help uh, the early days of the Nixon administration. Moynihan needed to put together a uh, staff of helpers to um, assist him and asked me and a couple of his other former students, as well as a couple of grown-ups, uh, if we would come and be part of his team at the White House. And then I went on uh, in various Moynihan incarnations, uh, ending with being his uh, legislative director during his first term in the uh, in the U.S. Senate about 10 years later. Um, that was the sort of formative experience in my early uh, professional life. and um, But other things were going on as well. Uh, Lyndon Johnson was declaring war on poverty and saying that education was the uh, way to, to get the end poverty in America, uh, the way to equalize opportunity. Uh, all of this uh, sounded like uh, something uh, uh, pretty exciting and, and uh, pretty important. I had already become a kind of a a volunteer work uh, social reformer as an undergraduate uh, and I knew I didn't want to join the family law firm in Ohio and um, I thought that uh, education might be the thing to do and uh, one thing led to another. Well this is why everybody should read Troublemaker uh, because all of this is in there. Uh, the uh, Moynihan was a disciple, uh, uh, as it were, of, of the late James Coleman, the great sociologist, whose major study of um, equality of educational opportunity had come out right about that time. And what the Coleman Report, as it's known, began to do in American education in the mid-60s, and we're still living with the consequences of this 40 years later, is to begin to, to switch our attention from what goes into schools to what comes out of schools from uh, inputs and resources and good intentions on the one hand to student achievement and um, actual school effectiveness on the other hand. That was a revolution in our approach to um, understanding and thinking about and making policy for education. And uh, the education profession didn't like it at all uh, because it was the beginnings of what we now call results-based accountability or standards-based reform and it began to say let's actually measure and look at what the what the schools accomplish rather than um, how much money per kid we spend or how many programs we've got in the school. So Moynihan uh, brought that uh, consciousness and a major uh, significant book uh, reanalysis of Coleman's data uh, out into public view and then he put that idea in basically into the mouth of Richard Nixon 
And uh, so Nixon's um, first major message to Congress on education uh, in, the, uh, in early 1970 uh, basically brought a Coleman-like reasoning to bear on uh, federal policy in education. And this began to make a lot of sense to me, that what we were interested in was whether things were working, not just whether uh, the intentions were good. And I was having a lot of simultaneous experience with uh, programs in schools that often were not working. And um, fiddling with the uh, uh, inputs didn't seem to change anything, and adding another program didn't seem to change anything. So I think the great shift, there have been two great shifts in American education over the last 40 years. Uh, but one of them has been from uh, inputs to results, and that was very much uh, Moynihan picking up on Coleman, and uh, uh, it certainly had an enormous influence on me and my work.